Welcome to this solo model review uh, where we're going to focus on characterizing the steady state and specifically focusing on the geometry. Uh, previously we talked about the algebra of the steady state and we set up the steady state equation. The most general way of talking about it was that the change in capital delta k was zero. So the amount of the capital wasn't changing or delta k equals zero. And we showed that if you substituted in the law of motion you could simplify that down to that investment equals depreciation. And if we substitute in for our basic model, uh, investment is S, the savings rate, times F of K, the output. So we get S times F of K equals delta K. And then we used, uh, we did an example where we, where we used this equation to actually calculate K, K star, the steady state capital level. Another, another approach to thinking about the steady state is that instead of you working with these as equations, we could make a diagram and sort of draw them out and see if we can visualize the steady state that way. So we're gonna make a graph where uh, k, our key variable, is on the horizontal axis and the vertical axis will be plotting two separate functions so we don't really need to give it a label. The first function is going to be the one on the left which is our s times f of k. So before we can figure out what s times f of k looks like we got to remember what f of k looks like. And that goes back to thinking about, well, we said f of k should have diminishing returns. To be most realistic, as you add more and more capital, the output will increase, but it won't keep increasing at the same rate. If you add a little, if you start with nothing and you add a little bit of capital, that helps a lot, but as you add more and more and more, from say 1,000 to 1,001, that probably isn't gonna do much. So the slope will go up, but it'll flatten out, and it should look something like uh, this. And now that's what, what it would look like if we graphed f of k, but what if we graph s times f of k? Well, s is just some fixed number, so say, you know, 0.5. So if we graphed s times f of k, it would be like f of k, but everything's shrunken down by half or shrunken down by some, you know, factor s, which means it would look qualitatively exactly the same. So this graph that I drew here is fine also as a sort of qualitative description of investment of s times f of k. So we've graphed the left-hand side. Now what we'd like to do is graph the right-hand side and see where the two intersect. That would be where the two are equal. So what does delta times k look like? If you look at it for a bit, you notice, oh, this is sort of like a straight line. It's mx plus b, where k is the x variable and b, the intercept, is zero. So it's a straight line that starts at the origin. So it would look something like, and now my hand's kind of shaky, so I'll, I'll try my hardest to make this as straight as possible. Uh, that looks pretty good. So this is our depreciation. This is delta k. And now we see where the two intersect here is where delta k would be zero, where s times f of k equals delta k, and that means that's where our k star is, our equilibrium, or, or our steady state, not, not equilibrium, our steady state level of capital per worker. Finally, the last thing we can do with this diagram, which I think is kind of interesting, is we could think about what if k wasn't at the level k star? What if it was, say, down here? So I'll put a, put a little notch here. What if that was our amount of capital? Quite a bit less than the steady state. What would we expect to happen to the amount of capital? Well, our level of investment would be up here, where I'm putting a circle, and our level of depreciation would be down here. So we'd be having a lot more investment. We'd be gaining a lot more new capital through investment than we're losing through depreciation. So we would expect that the capital would increase. And I could denote that with like a, uh, a, oh, whoops, a rightward arrow here. And the same would be true, you could see, if we had a little bit less capital, and investment still bigger than depreciation. If we had a little bit more capital, investment still bigger than depreciation. So we'd have like the capital increasing at all of these points up until that point where the two curves cross. And at that point, the new investment, the new capital, is going to just cancel out the loss from depreciation. So if you start with a small amount of capital, it will increase over time headed towards the steady state. And now if you imagine if we started with a lot of capital per worker, well, then we'd have this really big amount of depreciation and a relatively small amount of investment. You know, it's still a lot of investment because we have a lot of capital so we can produce a lot of output, save it, and invest it, but it's less than the depreciation. So if we started with a lot of capital, the capital would, per worker would tend to go down over time. So we'd be headed to the left. And you can see that's going to be true as long as we're to the right of the steady state, the depreciation is going to exceed the investment. So we'll be losing more capital than we can replace. So what this tells us is not only is K-star a steady state, but it's what we could call a stable steady state. If for some reason the capital decreased from 
started as steady state and decreased, it would tend to be pushed up over time back towards the steady state. And if for some reason it was at steady state and increased a little bit, it would be pushed back down over time towards that steady state. So it's stable in that sense. Let's think about another thing we can do with graphs. Whenever you've drawn graphs in the past, uh, at, you know, in an economic class, you've pretty much always done comparative statics. So let's do some comparative statics with this geometric approach to the solo model. Uh, a standard comparative statics exercise would be, let's play around with one of the exogenous variables. Here, uh, one of the exogenous variables is the savings rate, S, so we could suppose it increases. The other exogenous variable is the depreciation rate, so we could play around with that too. Uh, but let's start with saving. Intuitively, we would think if, if people save more, then they're going to be able to do more investment, all else equal, and that should lead to accumulating more capital. So you would hope that the answer we get with this graph is going to be as S goes up, the steady state capital K star goes up. Let's see if we can show that with the diagram. We'll start by showing some, oh, that's ugly. Don't want that. We'll start by drawing in our, just like we had on the previous slide, we'll draw in our investment S times F of K curve. So this is our initial savings. So I'll call that S1. And then we'll draw in our depreciation curve here. And that's delta K. So we get our initial steady state. And we'll call that maybe K star 1. Then we'll have to draw in what would the curves look like if we increase the savings rate to, say, S2. And it wouldn't change the depreciation curve. That delta K would still look exactly the same because delta is the same. But our investment curve would be shifted or would be scaled up a little bit. We have a bigger S. So everything's scaled up a little bit. And S2, this bigger number times F of K, would be just a little bit further up. And we can see that the, um, the, the steady state is now to the right of the one before. K star 2 is a little bit to the right of K star 1. So we do conclude, as we expected, that K star increases. Because S goes up, K star increases. And this is really not a surprising result. Uh, as an exercise, what you should do is show that as the depreciation rate goes up, the uh, steady state capital decreases. You could probably have intuited that just from thinking, well, if more capital is breaking, then you're not going to be able to accumulate a lot in steady state. But it's nice to be able to use these diagrams and con con confirm our uh, economic intuition using the model.